business myself and Etienne to Blanche started in 2015. Our first harvest was 2016. Etienne and I studied together at Stellenbosch University and then after our studies went our separate ways and reconnected at a wine tasting group called Kirtrekkers. We decided in 2015 that we want to make some Shannon. That's kind of how it all started. Eventually it kind of grew into something where in 2018 we were kind of like this little side project of ours is getting too big. We need to either give it 100% attention or we need to step back quite a bit. In 2018 I took on Thistle on Weed full time. So I've been a permanent employee of my own company for just over a year now. Etienne is, he's got a PhD in viticulture in Pinotage. So to annoy him, we call him Dr. Pinotage. So he looks after the vineyards. He's full-time at Vinpro. So he consults for Thistle and Mead on the vineyard side of things. And then I look after the wines and sales and marketing. Just from an aesthetic point of view, that was always really important to me that we've got something beautiful to look at without being overly feminine. The product in the bottle, I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. Divilki, I think we're really happy and satisfied and it's got its character and its personality. The other wines, for example, Khaki Bors is a work in progress and we are still working on some of our wines, but I, I'm very happy with where a lot of them are. Now that we're more invested in Shannon as a variety, I have a lot more respect for it. There's so much opportunity in South Africa for Shannon. A lot of um, thought has gone into where it's been planted, so it's got some really good sites. For me, it really expresses the uh, terroir very well. The first year we, we made the Shen and we also actually made a little bit of Alicante Boucher and Tariga Nacional, which was a complete failure, and Tempranillo. The Nasturkal was our second wine to Divilki, a blend of Tempranillo and Alicante Boucher. Then we started exploring some different Shenan vineyards. We introduced Brandnietl, which is our Stellenbosch Shenan Blanc. 2020, we'll also have a Swartland Shenan Blanc going into the bottle. And then Nastachal is our red blend and Karkibos is our white blend. The Tempranillo and Alicante Boucher are typical from the Alenteju region. Then we've got Verdello as the main building block in the Karkibos wine. We've blended with Chardonnay and Shenan this year, well, 2019, and 2020 we've made some Palomino and for now Perez. All of our wines are named after the colloquial Afrikaans names for weeds that you'd typically find in the vineyard. It was Saturday afternoon, we were wearing pluckies and board shorts on our way to the beach afterwards, and this vineyard was covered in devil keys, which is a devil's thorn. And every time we go back to that vineyard, your shoes just get covered in them. And that name kind of stuck with us. That was the first wine we, we made. And from there, we just kind of rolled with it, with all the weed names. I grew up in Johannesburg, which is quite a shock for most people. My mom grew up on a wine farm. My opa was uh, Neil Ubar of Speed. He's actually one of the three founding members of the Stellenbosch Wine Route. Quite a pioneer. My two older sisters also studied at Stellenbosch. They thought it would be fantastic to have a winemaker in the family again. I studied BSc in Agriculture, in Viticulture and Enology. Then after studying, I started working at Fairview as an intern, went overseas, did a harvest in France and a harvest in England, came back and uh, got a permanent position at Fairview and I did a, a master's degree in viticulture. It is lonely in a country if you don't speak the language. In England, very interesting, totally different climate to what we're used to. Um, I wouldn't have been able to drink my own bubbly at my wedding if I hadn't done the, the English wet, rainy vintage. <laughs> 
In 2018, we picked the Alicante Boucher. It gets very ripe very quickly. The timing is really important. In 2018, I was lucky enough to be working at a winery where I could use a berry sorter. I could get all the raisins separated from the grapes. I had this bucket of raisins. I decided to make a little bit of fortified wine, which I then put into a, a glass demijohn for aging, so which I think was 34, 36 liters. It's just kind of hung out in there for like a year and a half. We bottled it in little tiny 330 ml bottles. This year we took in a lot more Portuguese varieties, Tinta Barocca, Toriga Nacional, lots of little bits to play with. We had the same experience this year where some of the grapes were quite ripe, um, but we actually intended to make some port this year. So we've got a thousand liters of port this year, so quite a bit more. The connections you make with people, you know, it's the people that you meet along the way and the chats that you have. And, you know, when we go through tough times, everyone's in it together. and. It's a nice network to be part of. The people that have had a big influence on my winemaking career is definitely Charles Back and Anthony from Fairview. I got a lot of inspiration and motivation and creativity and courage as well from working there. A good winemaker has a lot of attention to detail, focus, also it's got your finger on the pulse. You need to actually be there when things are happening. I think if you get the feeling of what the winemaker or vintner is trying to express, then it's a good wine. My mom was definitely one of the women that played a really important role in my life. She taught me everything. My advice to any young woman wanting to join this very dynamic industry would be to just go for it. Um, there's, there's nothing standing in your way and just, just, just go for it. And if you need help, ask. There's a, a huge network of women um, in the wine industry that really support each other and so many people that would be willing to help you if you have any problems. Some words to describe myself, I'd say highly motivated, a go-getter and a yes person. <laughs>